Arsenal vs Tottenham is one of the fiercest rivalries in world football. At least twice a season, these two English giants battle it out for North London dominance. But there's a chilling history to this competition that actually has ties in the South. In 1882, a group of boys from the Hotspur Cricket Club decided to form their own football club. But to make it official, they needed a name. They wanted to call it Hotspur, but to avoid any mix-up with an already existing club called Hotspur FC, they decided on Tottenham Hotspur. Four years later, a separate group of workers from the Woolwich Arsenal Armament Factory teamed up to form Arsenal. This second division team played their matches out of Plumstead, a neighborhood in southeast London. It was a poor and underdeveloped place which also characterized the club. Match day goers rarely exceeded 10,000. For context, this would put them among the mid-table sides in England's third division today. The same couldn't be said for their soon-to-be rivals, as Tottenham regularly seated 50,000 spectators. Unfortunately for Arsenal, low attendance meant a lack of funding. In 1910, the club was close to bankruptcy, and its only chance of survival was to sell. It officially hit their lowest point. But, as the saying goes, when you hit rock bottom, the only way to go is up. Sir Henry Norris, a wealthy businessman, saw the potential for greatness in Arsenal and invested a large sum into the club. And Norris's vision saw Arsenal move to Highbury, a prominent district of North London, in 1913. But the club now had a new problem, their neighbors. A few short miles down the road, Tottenham Hotspur had set up camp and dominated North London for several decades. Tottenham didn't believe the North side needed more football clubs and took the matter to court. They argued that Arsenal's move breached league regulations, but were ultimately unsuccessful. The ruling allowed Arsenal to remain in North London. And while this created friction between the new neighbors, they still needed a spark to light the Derby flames. That spark came in the form of the First World War. In 1914, the world fell into chaos as major national powers fought against each other. But even amidst the World War, the Football Association allowed play to continue throughout the 1914-15 season. This saw two London Giants relegated to Arsenal's division, Chelsea Football Club and Tottenham Hotspur. Not only were these clubs now close by, but they were in the same division. The football club suspended its matches after this season, but allowed clubs to organize regional competitions. This led to many North London derbies throughout World War I. Five years later, the war was over. And as the dust settled on the battlefield, the North London Giants grew more hostile towards one another. The post-war era reintroduced standard football in England, and before the 1919-20 season, the EFL decided to expand the first division from 20 to 22 teams. Usually, the first and second place teams from the second division would have been the only sides promoted. But with the introduction of two new spots, two more teams were in contention for the top flight. Chelsea was granted the first spot since they'd been relegated because of a match-fixing incident which left one spot remaining. So, it was put to a vote, and it came down to six clubs, Tottenham, Barnsley, Wolves, Birmingham City, Arsenal, and Hull. Now, you would think the last spot would go to Barnsley, but after long consideration, Arsenal was voted into the first division. Both loud groans and cheers could be heard coming from opposite sides of North London. Tottenham believed it was because of unethical dealings and fans were outraged. At the time, Arsenal's fan base differed quite a bit from Tottenham's. Arsenal fans were mostly working class citizens, while Tottenham fans tended to be middle class. This separation created tension between the two sets of fans and stoked the rivalry. If the feud was an ember in 1913, then it grew to a roaring flame by 1920. Tottenham charged back into the first division after winning the 1920 title. But over the next 30 years, the animosity between the two clubs grew a little stale. This was in large part because of the Second World War. Focuses again shifted away from football. During this period, Tottenham spent 15 years in the second division. By contrast, Arsenal took away seven trophies, including five league titles and two FA Cups. Then things changed. After securing promotion with a league title, Tottenham immediately went on to win the first division for the first time in their history. Arsenal finished fifth. The rivalry was back underway, and for the most part, both clubs have remained in the top flight. An important part of any rivalry is the players involved. This is especially true for the top derby scorers and those who join the rivals. The North London Derby has seen many world-class individual performances, especially since the start of the Premier League. And while Thierry Henry is Arsenal's greatest ever player, two others scored more goals against Tottenham than him, Albert Pérez and Emmanuel Adebayor. With eight goals apiece, Pires and Adebayor are Arsenal's top scorers in this competition. Pires was even a starter in the Arsenal Invincibles, the only Premier League team to go the entire season without losing. 
Speaking of invincibles, Patrick Vieira always came alive in his competition. A guaranteed starter during Arsenal's greatest campaign, Vieira provided the title-winning goal and assist in a hotly contested match against, you guessed it, Tottenham. Look for Bergkamp, who looks for Vieira! This was the same season that Tottenham finished 14th, right behind newly promoted Portsmouth. For Tottenham, the name at the top of this list has to be Harry Kane. He is by far the Derby's most prolific goalscorer, with 14 to his name. He does. He He's the Premier League's third all-time scorer and the most feared player by Arsenal fans today. Next is Robbie Keane. Keane was a breath of fresh air for the Spurs attack. He scored in Tottenham's 2008 domination over Arsenal, which ended 5-1 at the final whistle. Turns away, played forward towards Keane. Keane's through on goal. It's Keane. It's 3-0. It's 3-0. That's the great start for Tottenham in the second half. First chance. He also scored in Arsenal's 2004 title-winning match. While it still would have been heartbreaking to watch Arsenal celebrate, Keane helped Spurs avoid a catastrophic loss. He is undeniably a club legend and, some may argue, is Tottenham's best ever player. Few things get fans more excited than a controversy, and few people are more controversial in North London than Adebayor and Sol Campbell. Yes, the same Adebayor with the second most goals in the derby. Let me explain. Adebayor began his English career in Highbury, netting a club record 8 goals against Tottenham. Then he joined the Lily Whites and scored 2 against his former employer. Despite what he did at the club, this made Adebayor enemy number one for Arsenal fans. On the other hand, Sol Campbell, better known as Judas by Tottenham fans, left Spurs to join Arsenal. He then went on to lift the Premier League trophy with the Gunners during a poor season for Tottenham. So let's just say Campbell isn't exactly loved by Spurs fans. His move is still regarded as one of the biggest betrayals in football history. The last things I'll mention about this competition's past are two of the most memorable derby days. I've already mentioned the 2-2 draw which saw Arsenal capture the league title in 04. The following year, these two teams met in a 9-goal thriller. Patrick Vieira is in for Arsenal and sweeps it home. Defoe. Here goes Jermaine Defoe all the way! And how? A game in which Arsenal was again the champion. Something about this derby breeds high-scoring results. After both sides met in the 2008 Carabao Cup semi-final, Tottenham walked away with a massive 5-1 win. Later that season, they hammered out a 4-4 draw, which included a 40-yard volley from David Bentley. What stung Arsenal fans even more was that he used to be a gunner. Michael Owen wins it in the most extraordinary way. Fans are the lifeblood of any rivalry. Players will come and go, managers will resign, and boardrooms will get overturned. But fans will never leave. And fans will never forget. Getting promoted, winning a cup, a title, or even going undefeated. It's these moments that give pride to fan bases and create positive club environments. And part of that atmosphere is celebrating wins over rivals. Louder cheers are seldom heard at Tottenham Hotspur Stadium than when the Spurs beat Arsenal, or at the Emirates when the Gunners down the Spurs. <laughs> Arsenal fans even have an annual holiday called St. Hottingham's Day. It signals the day it becomes mathematically impossible for Tottenham to finish above them in the league. Again, it's these sorts of things that fuel a rivalry and make the North London Derby one of the most entertaining matches of a season. In the Premier League era, these two sides have met 62 times, including 24 wins for Arsenal, 15 for Tottenham, and 23 draws. Both sides have undergone structural changes in the last several seasons, and now they both sit in the top four of this campaign. But what does the future for these two teams look like? To make some predictions, let's first look at previous seasons. Tottenham's average position over the last 20 Premier League campaigns has been 6th, Arsenal's has been 4th. In the last decade, Tottenham has only finished outside the top 4 on 4 occasions, making them a regular presence in the Champions League. 
Meanwhile, Arsenal have completed 5 of the last 10 seasons outside the top 4. But Arsenal has recently made a sharp turn in their form, and currently sits at the top of the table. And while Spurs currently sit in 4th, Brighton, Newcastle, and Liverpool are swarming around them with games in hand. The Gunners have also done the double over Tottenham this season, scoring 5 goals and conceding only 1. So, at the moment, North London is red. Both sides still have several difficult games left, with Arsenal destined to face Liverpool, City, and Newcastle away. But the signs are more worrying for Tottenham, who still must face Brighton, Newcastle, United, Liverpool, and Brentford. I predict that Arsenal will continue in their resurgent form and go on to win the Premier League. And because of the remaining fixtures and Liverpool's return to form, I also predict Tottenham will just miss out on the top four. But I don't think this will change the nature of the North London derby. Tottenham will work hard to hold on to Harry Kane and other key players. If they improve the team around them, and if Arsenal can keep their players fit, then North London derbies will continue to be some of the most unpredictable and contentious matches in world football.